Hi there, this is Eshu. I'm the abbot here at Zen West Buddhist Society. This Living Zen podcast is just one of the many resources we've created at Zen West to make Zen practice and training more available and accessible to people all over the world. Instructional videos, printable resources, and much, much more are also available on our website at www.zenwest.ca. If you're a regular listener, I'd love to hear from you. So please drop me an email at office at zenwest.ca and let me know who you are, how you got started, and what brought you to Zen. Everything we make available in person and online at Zen West is only possible because of the support of our members and associates, people like you. If the efforts of our community are making a difference in your life, I'd like to invite you to show your support and take part in making it happen by becoming an associate or member of the Zen West Sangha. You can do this by clicking the Join Us tab on our website at www.zenwest.ca. Thank you for your support, and thanks for listening. I have to start this evening with an apology. Uh, This afternoon we had sign up for uh, yoga or hiking. And so I led the hiking group on a trail that's in the part of uh, Roche Cove that's actually part of my territory (laughs) as a a warden. And uh, I took a couple of left turns when we should have taken right turns. And uh, I probably added what with the bad trail and (laughs) extra distance. I probably added about uh, four kilometers onto the whole uh, hike. So we got back late for this afternoon's activities. And I'm really grateful that uh, everyone just carried on without us anyway. It's good. It's good. So this whole uh, training period, we've been at it for uh, two days now. And we're starting, I think, to settle in a little bit. We're starting to sort out some of the Uh, details and rough edges. It's moving from sort of thinking about how it's going to go to how it's actually going to go. That includes with my family as well who are here uh, and sort of working with us in practice. So yesterday I started talking about the Diamond Sutra and the first chapter in which the Buddha simply uh, does this simple activity of going into the town, begging for his meal, coming back and eating it, setting up his seat. And this is the activity that we engage in in Zen practice, just to aspire to, just to uh, try to uh, not try, I guess. So that when we are doing these simple activities in our day-to-day training period or in our day-to-day life, when we're uh, getting up in the morning and putting on our clothes, when we're eating our food, when we're engaged in seated meditation or chanting or in conversation with our partners or families, to fully engage in that activity without a whole bunch of other things going on within us and around us. To be able to simply be completely present with what we're doing. This is what I think the value of uh, something like this training period is, is that it allows us to step outside the busyness, the complexity of a sort of home householder life. All of the little details that we have to attend to on a daily basis are kind of put on pause while we're here. And what I'm finding is that the physical practice, the sitting part, is a little bit less intense than a session, and so the kind of 
amazingly difficult physical aspect of session is a little bit reduced and so uh, I feel a lot more spacious in the activities that I'm engaging in and even for moments during the hike this afternoon when I wasn't preoccupied with whether I was going the right direction or not uh, there were some wonderful moments of just hiking just being amongst the big trees. And as we continue forward in this uh, period, this training period, allow these moments to happen as we're sitting and as we're walking and as we're eating and as we're chanting and as we are uh, working in the bush as we're tidying up and cleaning. These uh, little moments where everything drops away and there's just this activity that's in front of us, this thing that we're doing. Uh, Linji talks about it in the Rinzai Roku, this uh, buji, having nothing to do. Most of the time when we're engaged in things, when we're doing something, we've got a bunch of other stuff that also needs doing. So while we're busy with our hands doing this, we're also busy with our minds doing a bunch of other things, busy with our hearts doing a bunch of other things. And so this activity, this practice that we engage in, where we just strip, strip it down to the, to the chassis, just to the bare frame of life, letting everything go, so that we can know, so that we can come to experience and feel for ourselves what it means to be engaged in just this. I quite enjoy hiking, I quite enjoy walking. And I really find as a practice, today was great, although we were late, uh, because I find that when you get to the point where you're kind of tired, this is when hiking and walking really becomes good practice because there's really nowhere else to be. There's nothing else to do than just sort of taking the next step. There is a clarity. This clarity of purpose, this clarity of relationship with activity is not something that is just reserved for Zen practice. Uh, we all experience this in activities that we do all the time. If we're uh, musicians, we play our instruments and we'll know that there are moments when there is just this utter simplicity of music. where myself and the song and the lyrics and the intention and the emotion and all that stuff drops away and there's just this songing. Or if we like a certain sport, martial art, there are these moments where the uh, transient elements fuse and something happens. It's not as if we do it because we're not even really there. Simply the natural arising of activity, this unification. All of our lives we spend uh, arising and dissolving. There are moments where we're completely unified and there are moments where we uh, arise in distinction. We are able to see other. I talk about this a lot, but uh, the difference, I think, 
from how we tend to go around normally is that we see other, we see differentiation, we see uh, distinction, but we don't recognize it. It's like a stranger to us. When we see something other, we say, oh, that's other, but it's not me. And so we can behave in ways that are disharmonious. And this is why Zen practice emphasizes this unification, dissolution activity. Because it's after this unification, after we deeply experience this unification, when I arises, when the world of distinction arises again, then we're able to look at other and recognize it, know it intimately. We're able to see distinctly, we're able to recognize and discriminate, clar uh, clarify, but we are no longer deluded by the idea of other something outside or separate from ourselves. Having this realization, experiencing this for ourselves, allows us to live more harmoniously in the world of distinction, of discrimination. We engage in a practice which allows us to deepen that relationship allows us to continue to investigate this activity back and forth, dissolution and arising, birth and death. So I just want to say a quick thank you to the folks, the three people who joined us for this evening. I uh, realize it's difficult for me to give a short talk. I've been kind of sitting for a couple of days, so my mind is like, I think I'm ready to go for an hour, so I think I'm going to end here and just uh, thank you for coming to share uh, the time with us. Thanks for listening to the Living Zen Podcast. If you follow Living Zen through iTunes, I would very much appreciate it if you would take a moment to let me know what you think about it by rating or reviewing the podcast so that new listeners can also hear what you have to say. Thank you for your time and for your support.